Hey gang, so today's another sponsored video by G1 and they have sent the Pillbug Light. This thing is cool. Oh, I did it on this well, on the second try, but yeah. This is uh, the Pillbug Light spinner. This has to be one of the funnest spinners I've played with yet. I've got to admit that I'm kind of starting to get to like spinners a little more, uh, but I don't like, uh, I don't think I'm a purist in the sense that my spinners need to do something else other than just spin. And this, absolutely fits that bill um it kind of reminds me of an armadillo uh as you can actually get this at g1 for like 60 bucks right now and if you use my code uh the fidget fix you get 10 percent off so i mean come on can't go wrong with that um so use it go get it just use the code get your 10 percent. you deserve it you deserve a break you deserve 10 percent off anyways blah 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 right uh, so let's not waste any more time. Let's uh, let's get this thing under the camera and have a look because it's pretty cool. Let's go. Okay, so here we have the pill bug light. Now, right off the bat, I have to admit, I have no idea what this is made out of. It feels a little light to be steel. Uh, I have checked on G1's site, and they don't really talk about uh, the material used, so I don't know. If somebody does know, please let me know. It could be, uh, like, anodized aluminum, maybe. Uh, that would make sense to kind of keep the weight down, because there's a lot of mass here. Um, now, let's go over a couple things. One, you can hear it rattle, and that's because I put in the... Uh, there, it came with, like, uh, little steel balls, uh, so that part is really cool. It gives a nice texture to it. Now... Let's talk about the technique. I can kind of do this sometimes. Sometimes I get it. I'm getting better at it. The, the trick is you have to put your finger on a plate groove for it to be easy. And you want them to open up in this direction. So if I'm spinning like this, I want them to kind of fly open this way. Now, sometimes people might think, well, if you go like this, then, you know, it would make sense. Maybe the wind would catch it and push the plates up. I've found it doesn't really work that way. You have to like snap it this way so that one plate opens and the minute that one plate opens, it opens up the next and the next and the next and the next. So when you get it, if you wedge your finger in here for the grip, and again, I'm not always great at this, but I'm getting better. And then, you know, if you want that really cool feel, you just kind of like rub it against your finger and then feel them all close. The thing is, I find you can't just spin it. If you're just spinning it, they won't open. You've got to, like, grab here and give it a solid little push, a little flick. So, we got that going. It's great. It works. The little rattling side, I really do enjoy that. Uh, again, I am starting to, I'm starting to enjoy spinners, but I'm also realizing what I like about them, and they have to do different things. So, having this little, like... These little plates, these little, uh, kind of reminds me of like an armadillo or, you know, when you see like on the beach, like one of those um, worms that's kind of like coiled up in itself. Um, but it is, it does uh, look like a flower, I guess, because interestingly enough, it comes with this coin. And you can see here on the coin, there is like a flower blossom there. So uh, that is, I'm assuming that's what the shape is, or at least that's where it's kind of, you know, you can see that, right? So anyways, let's get to the big thing. How do you take this sucker apart? Because this is complicated, but it doesn't have to be. So we're going to get right into it. Let's open up. So first thing we do, like most spinners, right? Get the button. So we have our button. There we go. This post, this little extension post can screw into either side. So just be careful if it's loose. Know that it's not connected, okay? It can come right out. Next, this was the first part that threw me. How do you get into here? This little ring on both sides are threaded. Now, they're not threaded into each other. They're threaded into the green middle part. So what I do, now sometimes this gets a bit tough. I happen to have a ruler here. Um, if it's not super, super tight, you can actually just kind of like squeeze and pull and turn um, they will eventually open. What I've found is I take this little, this little, uh, sort of six inch woodworkers, uh, ruler and the curves just sort of fit nicely into that groove. And then I just a little 
start, little cheat, help in hand, then they pop right out. So next we have our little balls. So just steel balls, but they make a really nice little rattle once they're in there. Let's put that away. And then when we open it up, we're going to see screws in here. So let's look at, but I want to take this completely apart for you. So I'm going to take this side. Let's just take this off. Now this isn't necessarily needed, but again, it's always kind of interesting to see it right in its, you know, its basic parts. So we have the buttons, we have the purple rings. And again, these guys are threaded, but they're not connected. They each thread into the inside here. Let's see if we can get that. There we go. See, so we got the threading in there. So they just kind of screw in. And what they really do, their, their main job, one, aesthetics, right? It, it kind of adds to that blossom look, but also keeps the balls in. It gives those balls something to sit in and then traps them. Because without it, they would just fall right through. Okay, so let's get into the screws here. It's one. It's two. And oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're going to be a jerk. There, three. Okay, we'll take our screws. Let's just keep them safe. Now, this is loose, okay? And that's important. Um, because once we open this up, that is the only way to get our little petals out. And see, all you have to do is just sort of turn them a little bit, and then, you know, this green part will open up. You can just get something in there and sort of push it off. What's tricky with this is the petals, if one petal is closed, it'll kind of seal it shut. And I'll explain that in a minute. All right, so now we have a disaster, right? We have all of our petals. But I know for, uh, like, you know, if you end up buying in different colors, you can actually sort of mix and match and create some cool patterns. Uh, and then we have our bearing. So obviously the bearing just kind of, you know, sits there happy on its own. So this is it in all of its parts. Let me just put this over here for now. Okay, so there is a trick with putting this back together because there is a challenge here. These guys, um, they are tricky in that uh, they sit like this. Okay, so when you put one in and then you put a second one in, what happens is there's a lot of weight on these pedals and they start to sort of tip. They kind of want to close because there's magnets, as you can see here. See the magnet inside here? I should have shown you this. The magnet inside one pedal. Let's, there we go. The magnet inside one pedal attaches to the magnet of the pedal in front of it. So it does that. So that's why it stays together unless you flick it and you kind of separate at the magnets. And then when it starts to close and slow down, they all snap together. So that's really cool when you're playing with it. It's tricky when you're putting it together because it can be frustrating. The issue is these have to be open in order to put the other plate on top. If they're all closed like that, you can't get it on top. So they have to be open. And the problem is sometimes when you're working with it, you want to be able to use both your hands. But if you put this down, what happens is if you put this down and they're open, the green ring will just sort of slide off because there's nothing holding the green ring. So what I have found really helps is if you take a button and we put a button down as the base. Now make sure that the inset side is facing down, right? You want these little holes up and you'll find out right away if you try to put these on here. So when I set the button here, you can see I've got this, I've got this space, right? So when I do this, let's get our pieces out of the way. Let's, let's center up our frame. Okay. So now I have a surface that allows me to take a pedal 
and put it on. But now the pedal is still hanging on the green ring and it's not supporting the green ring. And that is important. So that as I kind of spin around here, right now, see how they want to close right away? They just want to do that because of the magnets. And that's okay. At first, you can kind of do it without really paying attention. Right? So, you know, you'll get to here. We have to open this guy up, pop that in, pop in the last one. Now, they want to close. We can't fit that in. So what we have to do, and this is why it's important to have this spindle here, because we want these guys to sit free so that they can open up and not be, um, you know, not, not come in contact with the table beneath them. And then that would prevent them from opening. So the issue is just getting them away from the magnets. And if you can get them away from the magnets, they're totally fine. The only reason they want to snap back is if the magnet here comes in contact with the magnet there and then it pulls it in. So now that we have that open, here's the important part. These three screw holes, you want to match up with these three screw holes. So I'm just going to hover. Well, I was going to hover. You can even, there we go. Okay. So once they're lined up, now I can just pull this off. I don't need the button. And now you see how when a pedal closes, you know, if I look, if we look really, really close, I'm hoping the camera will be able to catch this. When the pedal closes, we can see that these two edges here, come on now. These two edges keep the green rings in place. And then what that allows us to do is get our screws back. Oh no, look what we did. Forgot the bearing. Oh, I was so proud of myself for getting this right. All right. Well, listen. Let's open it up. This is not something to be afraid of. Now, this is a bit tricky getting this off. And you're probably going to lose that. And that's fine. We'll just do it again. I'll just show you how quickly it can be done. So, <laughs> Make sure you put your bearing in, then put your spinner ring on. Let's get our pedals in. I also like that having it on the button lets you just kind of turn it like this. You know, it's like a, a lazy Susan, I guess. If that's still what they were called, which I would think so. Okay, so now that that's on, we just have to separate them. And again, once you break the connection of the magnets, then it's fine. The pedals don't really care where they sit. So again, I'm going to take my three holes here. I'm going to line them up with my three holes here. And I'm just going to drop it in. Are we good here? There we go. Oh, we're good. Sometimes you just have to fiddle with it a little bit to get it in place. So now that we've got those in, let's go back to where we were a second ago before I was so rudely interrupted by my own incompetence. Now these little screws sometimes are a little tricky to get out. So that's why I always have my trusty tweezers. And again, these are my absolute favorites because they stay closed. So when you put them onto something like this, you know, I can, I'm not sitting there pinching them closed. So that screw is in there. And then, no, I don't know if this will work though, because these are a little bit big for this spot. Well, there you go. So get my one screw. It's always a little tough also working. Um... Okay, hold on gang. I did something wrong and I didn't really understand what was happening or didn't even really notice it until after I recorded the end of the video and said, thanks for watching, blah, blah, blah. 
there is one thing very important that I missed. The screws have to go in a certain, into a, a particular side. If you notice on this side, I initially had my screws going in this way. And I was getting a bit of a rattle sound when I was spinning it. And it's because, so the holes on this screw, or sorry, the holes on this side are a certain width. But the holes on the other side have been bored in a little bit. So when my screws were sitting in here, they were not flush. So I had them in the wrong side. So that is important to know that they need to go in this side. So that they can actually see how they're inset. They go all the way in. Oh, dang it. There we go. So they go all the way in the hole. And in fact, they're down deep in the hole. So that is my, uh, that was my bad. But we're good now. We're good. Let me just get this last one in here. Man, I had the video finished. I was done. I opened my office door. I'm hoping the dogs won't bark now because it's still open. But here, let's just close these up. Get the balls in. Okay. Let's try to get that going. Right, that feels way better. Everything's close. I will tell you, when you put these things to, back together, if something feels off, it's because you've done something wrong. Every time. Every, every time. There. That spins. Now that's what it should sound like. See that nice and smooth? Remember, we grab the edge. There we go. All right, there. Now I'm done. Okay, thanks for watching, gang.